Welcome to this week's Ancient History News. I'm headlining with research into how the plague may have been the reason for the population decline in Northern Europe that happened during the Neolithic. Interestingly, it was also the time when megalith building came to a halt in this region. Keeping in with that theme, I then discussed the discovery of the bacterium Brucella melitensis at the 8,000 year old site of Mentens Hoyuk in Turkey. Moving on from bacteria, I also look into the discovery of a subterranean structure at a Maya site in Mexico and the rather intriguing analysis of a textile fragment from the Cave of Schools in Israel. Plague may have caused the Neolithic population collapse. Between 5300 and 4900 years ago, the populations of farming communities across Northern Europe went into a sharp decline. Experts have inferred this from the lack of human remains radiocarbon dated to this time period. Known as the Neolithic collapse or Neolithic decline, researchers have put forward a number of hypotheses over the years to explain it, including that maybe some sort of agricultural crisis took place. This was also the time when megalith buildings ceased in this region and when the corded ware culture began to spread throughout Europe. Now, a paper published in the journal Nature has found evidence that the plague may have been the reason for this demographic decline. The researchers sequenced 174 DNA samples from human skeletal remains that had been discovered during the excavations of eight megalithic graves and one stone kist in Scandinavia. After excluding low coverage data and merging samples which came from the same individual, they were left with samples which represented 108 individuals from the nine sites. The sequenced data was then analysed to find evidence for known human pathogens. Overall, the most frequently occurring one was Yersinia pestis, which causes the plague. It was found in 17% of the sampled population. There were also more than one sample of Yersinia enterocolitica, which causes Yersiniosis, and Borrelia recurrentis, found in body lice, which causes relapsing fever. Plague was found in samples in different locations across southern Scandinavia, including Falbigden, Zeeland, Denmark, and on the Swedish west coast. This shows that the plague was geographically widespread 5,000 years ago. None of the three strains had the YMT gene, which is needed for survival in a flea's digestive tract. Therefore, it's unlikely that the plague was spread by fleas like the bubonic plague of the 14th century was. It's more likely that it was spread via human to human or human to louse to human transmission. The team was also able to build family trees by analysing close familial relations between individuals buried in the Freilsgarden, Hjelmars Ruhr, Landbergarden and Rosberger Passage graves. These family trees revealed a patrilineal pedigree. This was further supported by the identification of two brothers and a sister who had been buried separately. The brothers at Hjelmars Ruhr and the sister at Freilsgarden, eight kilometres away. The sister had moved away from her siblings and started a large family of her own who were then buried alongside her at Freilsgarden. One example of inbreeding was discovered where two brothers were the offspring of third degree relatives. From an ancestry perspective, most of the individuals sampled fell into either European Neolithic populations or that of Anatolian farmers. This associates them with the funnel beaker Trishtabesha cultural complex. The researchers also found two younger groups with steppe-related ancestry and two genomes which contained a significant amount of hunter-gatherer ancestry. These two individuals could have been descended from Mesolithic groups, however it's more likely they were descended from the pitted ware culture. On the subject of bacterial pathogens, another recent paper discussed a study into Brucella melitensis. Preserved genome reveals that Brucella melitensis has a Neolithic origin. Brucella melitensis was isolated in Malta in 1887, hence the name, which includes the old Punic Roman capital city of Melita. 
In 1905, the method of transmission from healthy goats to humans via the consumption of dairy products was identified. It causes brucellosis in humans, which is also called undulant fever, malta fever, and Mediterranean fever, and before the advent of antibiotics, could be deadly. In 2010, researchers at the University of Catania in Sicily detected brucella melitensis in 3,200-year-old cheese found in the ancient Egyptian tomb of Tammoza, a vizier during the reign of Amenhotep III. A new paper published in the journal Nature Communications discusses the Neolithic origin of the bacterium in Turkey. It has long been hypothesized that Brucella melitensis had been present amongst Neolithic farming communities. However, before this recent study, no genomic evidence had been found to support the hypothesis. The researchers isolated the melitensis genome from an 8,000-year-old sheep specimen that had been excavated from Mentenza Hoyuk, a mound in northwest Turkey. This study also gave the research team the opportunity to provide dates for the evolutionary steps of the bacterium. Although there is limited data to support zoonotic transmission 8,000 years ago, it probably did take place due to the intensification of livestock management at that time. However, evidence suggests this process then accelerated over the next 7,000 years. Underground Mayan structure discovered in Mexico. Archaeologists excavating a Maya bull court at Campeche in Mexico have found a subterranean structure with painted walls underneath it. Dating to an earlier period, further investigations are needed to identify its full extent and what its function may have been. The excavation is led by archaeologist Ivan Sprake from the Institute of Anthropological and Spatial Studies in Slovenia. Several pre-Columbian peoples in Central America played ritual ball games, a tradition which continued for hundreds of years. The Maya civilization built huge stone courts in important regional centers specifically for these ball games. According to Live Science, Sprack thinks this subterranean structure likely played an important role in society, considering that the presence of a later ball court above it shows it was located in a major city. It is covered in a layer of painted stucco and probably dates to the early classic period between 200 and 600. Prior to this, Sprack and his team had carried out LIDAR surveys of the Maya lowlands in Campeche and had identified several Maya settlements, which include residential buildings and pyramids. The new site with the ball court and underground structure is south of Ockhamton. Spryke and his colleagues also discovered a site including a plaza, a 60-metre high pyramid and a rectangular water vessel. On the top of the pyramid they found ceramic vessels, a ceramic animal leg that may be an armadillo and a chert knife. These would have been votive offerings. New study reveals a red pigment used to dye an ancient piece of cloth travelled far. The cave of schools at Nahal Salim in the Judean desert was first excavated in the 1960s. Over the years, material related to different time periods has been found there, including the Chalcolithic, the Early Bronze Age and the Middle Bronze Age. The most recent excavation, which took place in 2016, yielded 430 textile fragments, 50% of which dated to the Chalcolithic between 4500 and 3800 BCE. Textiles are rare in the archaeological record because they do not usually survive. However, the dry microclimate west of the Dead Sea created the perfect conditions for these textile fragments to be preserved. A tiny strip of material dyed red was analysed by researchers with the results of the study published recently in the Journal of Archaeological Science Reports. The textile fragment was dated to the Middle Bronze Age, but an analysis of its pigment was the most intriguing aspect of the paper. In the Bronze Age, red dye for textiles was made using crushed bugs. Just as with Turenian purple dye, which was made from the mucus of the murex snail by the Phoenicians and later the Greeks and the Romans, red dye made from crushed insects was difficult to produce and reserved for the elites or for rituals. The red dye was made from female scale insects that live on the Kerma's oak tree. They could only be collected for one month of the year, 
in the summer just after the female scale insect laid her eggs, since this was the time when the most dye could be extracted. These insects are extremely small and camouflage well, making them difficult to find. That, together with the small amount of dye they produce, made the pigment very prestigious. Interestingly, the researchers found that this dye used for the scrap of material found in the cave of skulls came from a specific species that lives on a tree non-native to that area. In fact, this particular oak tree can only be found in the central and eastern Mediterranean, including France, Spain, Greece and Cyprus. The textile fragment may be small, but it's important because it suggests an elite or ritual use of textiles and it also suggests broad trade networks. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Thank you to my patrons and channel members for all of your support and I'll see you next time.